It's a beautiful Sunday in Korea, and today we are on our way to church. I've been so busy lately that I haven't had the chance to say hello to some people. I attended the service in Korean, and Jason just used ChatGPT to translate the main message for him. Towards the end, we went in front of the stage and quickly introduced ourselves in Korean. After that, we ate lunch with the church members. I was pretty surprised by the extensive menu. Everything looked and tasted so delicious. Are you getting one for me? Yeah, how many do you want? One. <laughs> Shortly after, we could have headed to the Blue House, which is the equivalent of the White House in America. But Jason wanted to see the World's Riot pop-up store at Lotte World Mall. So we are headed there now. If you come to Korea, you might see a tall skyscraper called Lotte World Tower. This building is Korea's tallest building and the fifth tallest in the world. This tower holds three Guinness World Records, the world's highest glass floor observatory, the world's fastest and tallest double-deck elevator. You can visit Seoul Sky and if you're brave enough, you can take the Sky Bridge tour. This building also has an indoor and outdoor amusement park called Lotte World. Lots of people like to rent out school uniforms for fun, to feel young again, and because you get a discount by wearing one. So why not have fun? Would you rent out a school uniform? Let me know in the comments below. When I was looking for wedding venues in Seoul, Signal was one of the seven venues I considered. Signal is located on the 76th floor of Lotte World Tower and is famously known in Korea as Wedding in Heaven. The meals here are carefully crafted by three-star Michelin award-winning chef who worked at Cheval Blanc by LVMH. They also have a world-class wedding planner to help you with every detail of your wedding. Have you guys seen Lotte World Mall yet? This place is huge, offering a blend of shopping, dining, entertainment, and cultural experiences. In the mall, we saw a Studio Ghibli pop-up store. Everything here was so cute and reminded me of my childhood. Jason actually tried to buy tickets to see a League of Legends game in Korea on the day the tickets went on sale, but they sold out instantly. Crazy, right? I have a feeling Koreans had first priority when it came to buying tickets. So unfortunately, we won't be seeing a game, but today we're here to check out the pop-up store. Can you guys spot Faker, the mid laner for SKT? There he is, buried under all the fans' messages. So popular. We also saw some cosplayers and lined up to get an LCK Legend player's autograph. Can you guess who it is? Here's a hint, Flame Horizon. Jason was so nervous and at the same time excited to see him. Oh, and we were the last two people in line that got lucky enough to meet him. Oh, 
His in-game name is Flame. He's famous because he was such a good laner that he would often be over 100 CS ahead of his opponent. In Korea, they call him the pilot because he used to hard carry his team. He also has a lot of female fans due to his good looks. At the pop-up shop, we got to play a scavenger hunt where we had to find three Teemos and earn three stamps for a chance to win prizes at the end. Does that count? The Teemo up there? I just hit a Teemo. We found the first Teemo at a stage where we had to take a picture with a big Teemo background. The second activity was to write a fan message to a team. I obviously wrote a message to T1, while Jason decided to write a message in Korean to his favorite player, Showmaker from Dom1, Kia. Wow, look at all these fan messages. I don't know how these people have the time to draw these. These are really impressive. Lastly, we had to take our photos at the photo booth to get our final stamp. Once we had all three stamps, we each got a chance to spin the wheel for prizes. Aww, we both ended up getting gold. Oops. I picked a KT car, but later realized KT is not the same as SKT. Then we looked around the shop to check out some cool merchandise. Jason thought about buying a Yone figurine, but I had to remind him that we couldn't bring too much back with us to Vancouver. If you're curious about which team won, here's a clip of the world's final in Korea. A decade since their first SKT legacy has been reignited! T1 will be your 2023 world champion! The story wasn't about them, but this year it is. All the pent up emotion. After checking out the Riot pop up store, we wandered around the mall and found my uncle's store. Then we start to get hungry, so we decide to check out the food options at Lotte department store. On our way, we came across some expensive fruits. I think next time I visit my grandparents, I should get these fruits as gifts. Generally, the restaurants are located on the top floor, so we'll be taking the elevator up to the 11th floor. When we got there, there were so many options that we literally couldn't decide. We ended up choosing an Indian restaurant called Agra. Honestly, Jason grew up in Little India in Toronto, so he loves Indian food. While I'm not a big fan of Indian food, even though I grew up in an area where it constantly smelled like naan bread and curry. 
We picked this place because they had a premium set for 92,651, but there was a discount of 39% off, so it was 57,601 for two people. The premium set allows you to pretty much try everything from their menu. Jason got a mango lassi, while I can't quite remember what I got. Then we got a cool mango snowing bread. I don't know how to eat this. How do you eat this, Jason? Blow it, blow it, blow it. I don't remember exactly what we had, but I think this is a tandoori chicken. Next, we had two curries of our choice, butter chicken makani and chicken vindaloo. My favorite part was the naan bread, which was unlimited and all you can eat. We got to try all of their flavors, classic garlic, honey butter, and truffle garlic. Our favorites were the honey butter and truffle garlic. According to Jason, some of the more aggressive flavors that East Asians are generally not fond of can be a hit or miss, but this restaurant did a great yeah. job. He said this place is an excellent introduction to Indian food for people who are not used to the stronger Indian spices, while having everything taste authentic. My review overall would be that this place definitely exceeded my expectations. I love the presentation and all the flavors. For someone who is not a big Indian foodie, this place was surprisingly very delicious and every plate that came out blew my mind. I highly recommend this place to everyone. It's a chain, so you can find it in 26 other locations across Korea. This place was such a great find. Well, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to this video.